When going over the lore for the map canal on Rainbow Six Siege this week, I have to say I came across a story that I find completely fascinating. And it all covers the Cockershell heroes. Now if anyone's gonna comment based off the name I just said, thinking you're being original, you're really not. But that aside, I am super excited to tell this story. I have never heard of this story and this is partially why I love doing what I do. Now this particular story covers something called Operation Frankton. And the reason that these brave, brave men were called the Cockershell Heroes is because they used a type of boat, which happened to be a folding kayak that was known as the Cockle Mark II. But the interesting name aside, I really am looking forward to telling you this story. It kind of reminds me of the hidden heroes just even in Rainbow Six Siege, as so many players put everything on being top fragger. Now don't get me wrong, fragging is a huge key important part of the game. But just like big wars that everyone remembers, similar to like the top fragger, there's a whole bunch of little things that happen of a Valkyrie cam that's well placed that happens to give that top fragger the ping to know what angle to be able to kill the enemy and clutch the round. Sometimes the little guys don't get much credit. And on that note, let's get into the story. In December of 1942, an elite group of men were on a submarine called the HMS Tuna on their way to do a secret mission. And their mission was to blow up ships carrying very needed supplies for the German to help them in the war. But unlike using the normal techniques when it came to blowing things up in that time, these men in the cover of night were going to secretly go and use limp mines to blow up these ships using kayaks. There were six two-men kayaks involved in this mission. Unfortunately though, one of the kayaks was damaged when they were removing it from the submarine, so only five ended up going and 10 men total. Each kayak was actually given a name. The Conger with Corporal George Heard and Marine David Moffat. The Cuttlefish with Lieutenant John Jackie McKinnon and Marine James or Jim Conway. The Coalfish, Sergeant Samuel Wallace and Marine Robert Ewart. The Crayfish, Corporal Albert Lavere and Marine William Mills. And last but not least, the Catfish, which had the commander of the mission in it, Major Herbert Blondie Kessler and Marine Bill Sparks. And on the night of December 7th, these men went up the river to begin their mission. The plan was to use a cover of night to travel, and during the day they would hide their kayaks and sleep. And even though they had been training for this mission and even had rough water training, they did not expect essentially five foot waves. And on that first night, they lost the conger and the cuttlefish as they capsized. Now the members of the cuttlefish actually did make it to shore. Unfortunately, the conger wasn't so lucky that both Corporal George Sheard and Marine David Moffat died of hypothermia and drowned. And even though the cuttlefish made it to shore, they managed to evade the Germans for a while, but they were eventually caught. And both Lieutenant McKinnon and Marine Conway were eventually executed. Now this left the coalfish, the crayfish, and the catfish. And even though they had been separated, they managed to find each other and set up on shore. But sadly, the morning of December 8th, the coalfish was found on shore. And Sergeant Samuel Wallace and Marine Robert Robert were caught and eventually executed. And now just down to a third of his force, Commander Hessler and his men set out again and paddled 22 miles in six hours. Then another 15 miles on the third night. And on the fourth night, due to strong currents, they only managed nine miles, which led Commander Hessler postponing the attack by one day. On the final day, the four men prepared their limpet mines and planned for an escape as they set out just after dark to make their final miles to the harbor. They fought against tides and exhaustion as they neared their destination but their perseverance came in the form of sleeping merchant ships tied up alongside the many docks, precious cargo needed by the Germans for this war. Commander veered the catfish towards the westernmost ships, while the crayfish took to the east. The catfish placing eight limpet mines on four different vessels, three cargo ships and one patrol boat, and the crayfish placing eight mines on two vessels, five on a cargo ship and three on a smaller liner and then they silently slipped downstream. The only close call at this point being a curious guard shining his light down the water for a moment, almost catching the catfish. And once safely downstream, the time limpets detonated 
A huge simultaneous roar rocked the harbor. Sirens going off and sailors discharge as their hulls filled with water, causing the boats to settle in the chilly water. All who witnessed the event knew that the vessels could not be saved. They would be out of action for several days to months, leaving an already taxed merchant fleet unable to deliver goods to Hitler to help him with the war. Now, after many more hours of paddling, the crayfish and the catfish saw each other one more time before they set off for their escape towards Spain. They had hoped to make contact with the French Alliance, which they could go through and go from house to house and eventually meet at the border. Tragically though, the members of the crayfish, Corporal Albert Levine and Marine William Mills were caught two days later and imprisoned and eventually executed. The only men that managed to make it out alive with this mission were the members of the catfish, Major Herbert Kessler and Marine Bill Sparks. And even that was a challenge as they traveled over a hundred miles, hiding out for days in different locations until finally getting to Spain. Now, many people have asked, was this mission worth it? And the simple answer is yes. Winston Churchill even stated that because of this mission, it shortened the war by six months. Can you imagine how many lives were saved because of these brave men? So on that note, I hope you enjoyed learning a small version of what the Cocker Shell Heroes are all about. And sometimes the little guys and the little missions make all the difference. So teamwork, work together, just like in our six. Everyone has a role to play. And though yes, top braggers are a needed must awesome thing, but sometimes the little guy can make a huge difference too. And these 10 amazing men are proof of that. And with that being said, I'm going to end it here. As always, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous weekend. And well, until the next time. Bye.